Hey there, and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And today, we've got some updates and some new things. Let's get into it. All right, so what I'm talking about today is a couple things. First up, you're gonna see this little Amiga share thing on the screen, I'm like, just ignore that for now. But what we wanna do is go over to Workbench, and I downloaded a couple tools based on some feedback on my Picasso video. And I haven't really deep dove into them, but I just wanna make you aware that yes, I am, I am onto it. <laughs> I've got the Picasso 96 Variable Center, which is basically the PVS tool, which you can get off of AmyNet. And what this does is this gives you like a global interface to control a lot of the features that are normally, uh, you know, like hidden away in tool types for the Picasso, or you can get access to some of these using the, the software that comes with the Picasso, but this allows you to kind of deep dive and get into really customizing and tailoring the Picasso. And if you know somebody who knows what they're doing, because I don't, uh, they can help you use this software to maybe make your Picasso experience even better. Like, uh, for example, how I was saying that even though the Picasso is grabbing native Amiga video and showing it natively, like when I run view, for example, you know, I still get these jail bars from the native chipset, right? Well, using these Picasso tools, you can actually tweak the Picasso's flicker fixer to maybe get rid of those jail bars using uh, these tools. And there's, uh, I've had some friends of the channel, uh, who have kind of jumped in and, and, and contacted me uh, and let me know that, hey, they can help me out with this kind of stuff. But I just wanted to make you aware that yes, yeah, there are tools and I'm aware of them like PVS. And then in preference, there's the other one, of course, uh, where's it at? Yeah, Picasso 96 Prefs, which uh, is uh, very actually similar to that other tool. It's just not as pretty, but this allows you to add different modes and monitors. And again, you're gonna see a lot of the same switches that you saw in that other app over here and has its defaults, like what it can do, whether it's on or off or use default. And so again, more ways to uh, customize the Picasso software driver using these, these tools. Aware of those, here they are. Look forward to playing with them in the future. I, I don't have a big need for that. Like I'm, I don't have a problem with the, the jail bar thing. It's not that bad, you can barely see it. And of course, you know, I've eliminated the jail bars completely using the Picasso native modes, as you can see here. But I did want to get into this other neat little thing that I found. I was, uh, basically I jumped over, I was launching up Eyebrows 3.0, okay? And I was very happy. By the way, see how when you open Eyebrows up, how it opens up the window, always in the same spot, small? I did notice that if you, on a, and as, long as, you're, as long as you haven't rebooted your Amiga, and so you're like, hey, Eyebrows, and you quit, say so quit, I quit Eyebrows. Now go ahead and relaunch Eyebrows. Again, long as you haven't rebooted your Amiga, it does remember, it'll, it'll open back up in full screen like that. That was pretty cool. But anyway, I was playing along over on EmiNet and I went ahead and I was just doing like latest packages the last 14 days. I was just scrolling through here and checking some stuff out. And I saw a couple things that it caught my eye that I wanted to share with you. First off was this HEIF-Convert. Yeah, this is a tool that will allow you to convert modern day HEIF files that like Android and iPhones use when they take photos and pictures, a lot of times now, unless you tell it not to on the phone software, it will default to saving out in this new format. And obviously the Amiga has no idea what this is. Now really, a conversion tool is really awesome, but even better would be a data type because one of the awesome things that the Amiga did for us or Commodore did for us, I believe with Workbench 3.0 was before they went out of business and went away, they added the whole data type concept to the Amiga, which is basically a plug-in tool system. It's a way to have the Amiga be able to read audio and video files and text files, almost any kind of file as described in this little kind of mini program that tells you what, it tells the Amiga what it is so that it can display it using Amiga stuff. And that's the data type. So this is welcome. This will allow you to do like a command line conversion of uh, Apple and Android HEIF and HEIC images, it'll convert them to JPEG or PNG so you can use them on your Amiga. Hey, that's pretty slick. And then as I kept scrolling down, I noticed a couple other things. One of them was the, um, so I don't know if, if, you've, if you've been browsing the web lately and especially if you're doing like Google image searches, you know, you'll go onto Google, let's see here, we'll type in, you know, Amiga, Google, and we'll go to like images. 
And so you'll get these images and you're like, oh yeah, I wanna, I wanna send this in, in a text or a chat to one of my friends. And you'll right click on it and you'll try to save the image. And you know, you'll go to like save image as. And when you do that, it'll say WebP instead of like JPEG or PNG, like WebP. It's like, well, what the heck's WebP? Well, it's a, it's a new, yet another new kind of efficient proprietary um, image encoding format, like a JPEG format. And until I discovered this, data type, there's now a data type for the Amiga that supports WebP. So when you're browsing the web on your Amiga or looking at images or downloading an image, if it's in the WebP format, this data type supports that now. So now your, your Amiga can handle that modern uh, image codec. And it comes with 68,000 version all the way up to, I believe, PowerPC version. So it's got the 68020, 30, 40, 60 covered PowerPC. So pretty slick. So for example, if some of these images were WebP based, they might not even show up in in eyebrows, it might just show like a question mark or something. But now, you know, we get all these images, so you can click on them, and everything works. So that was that was kind of neat. But another thing I saw was a, a GUI. I was scrolling through here and looking at network stuff, and I came across this program that was called SMB2-GUI. Now I know that's a very very formal sounding name, yes. And I, I downloaded it. Of course, me being me, and I know everyone yells at me. I don't read readme files. I don't read the the abouts or any of that stuff. I'm really bad at that. I just launch things and see what happens. So like most Amiga stuff back in the day, I launched it and it immediately spit up that it needed all these other support files. It was like, you're missing this, you're missing that. And I was like, ah, okay. Well, what am I missing? Turns out there are some support files that SMB2-GUI needs. So first you go into AmyNet and you grab SMB2-GUI. And if you're not me, you actually read the readme and it'll tell you everything you need to get. I'll just let you know here, the support files it needs are a couple things. It needs something called code set, codes, I'm gonna say this right again, code sets 6.2.1 is the latest version. And then it also needs HWP underscore Rappa GUI. Apparently, again, I'm not a coder. There's a coding compile package out there for the Amiga called Hollywood or something, or I'm not sure, right? Whatever it, whatever it is, I think it's Hollywood is the name of the code package that allows coders to make software for the Amiga with GUI and fun stuff. Anyway, that little tool requires HWP Rappa GUI, which you can get on AmyNet. And then it also requires this code sets dot, you know, 6.2.1 file. So you, you extract these things out and one of them is really huge, by the way, like seven megs. You extract that, you go through and install those. And after you get those installed and you have to reboot a couple times, you can then finally double click this thing down here, execute it. Now, some of you guys know how to turn this into an icon that just launches the program instead of doing this weird kind of tool type thing. Be super appreciated. Leave a comment below. Click execute and sure enough, instead of having to go into shell and type out a bunch of gibberish like I've done here, as you can see back here, and then you save this as a little text file, as you see down here, this is my Amiga share. Instead of having to go through all that, you, you get this little little GUI presentation thing, right? And it's it's very much what you're seeing up here in the text file, but it's it's here presented for you in a GUI so that you can <laughs> you can test and, and do things. And you can see here, you're gonna give it the computer name, the share volume drawer, the DOS volume name. You, if it's read only, if it's no password, write the scripted password into NTML, no idea what that is. And it gives you the little output of what's going to happen here. In fact, based on the defaults, they're giving you an example of what's going on, which is kind of handy because now it's letting you know exactly what you need to do, which if you look up here, you can already see I've done with my old style manually created share. There's some differences. The stack size is different between these two. But see, I've got my information here. So what I could do in theory is go to computer name here. So I'm gonna go, now Now, keep in mind, of course you already need to have a TCP IP stack running. Uh, you need to have preferably a host file edited that tells the Amiga the UNC names versus the IP names. So it helps resolve things, you know, makes life a little easier. And of course you need the SMB2 handler installed, which I have, have installed. So we'll go to computer name. Now, if you go over here, you notice I don't have computer name here. So I'm gonna just guess, and my server is called Quinn. Now the name of the shared volume drawer. So the volume drawer is Amiga and it's called in slash files slash Amiga. I know, don't roll your eyes at me, shared. And then the Amiga DOS volume name. So that's what it's gonna be called over here. 
I guess I will call it Amiga Share because that's what I called my little file down here. And the username is Q. It does have a password. So how do I enter the password? I guess I click here. Now this password was just created for the share. So it's not like, oh, I'm gonna hack into Q's network and get all this. No, this is just a local share only for an Amiga share. And you know, save as DOS driver, not sure what that is. Hey Q, you know if you read the README file? It probably tells you exactly what that does. We'll go ahead and click mount. DOS, now it says SMB2 DOS driver not found in sys storage. DOS drivers, you must save it before mount it. Oh, well, there you go. Look, it's it's explaining, since I didn't read anything, it's what you need to do. Okay, so save DOS driver, okay, mount. Do we see anything, did, did anything mount? I don't see anything on the desktop. So let's go to Amiga share. Nope, <laughs> did, not, uh, did not show up, uh, mount. Now it says the device SMB2 is already mounted, oh, SMB2 is already mounted. Oh, well, wait a minute. So if I go SMB2, nope, that's because you typed in SM2Q, All right? SMB2, nope, I didn't do it. Okay, well, there we go. It says it's already mounted, but I'm not seeing anything. So I don't know. So now we'll go ahead and say save DOS driver and mount. So it's already mounted. Okay, well, here's what's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna do a reboot because now that's in the DOS driver, right? That's in the DOS driver devs folder. So is it gonna automatically call it up on a reboot? Let's see if that works. Never know. That's the fun thing about Amigas, especially when you don't read the readme files. But that's my whole point is to show the Amiga and how easy it is to learn to use even if you don't have documentation or support. You just figure it out on your own. The one thing is, yeah, I don't see the share popping up anywhere. So we'll go ahead and launch the program. Okay, so it basically just defaults back to whatever, and I'm assuming what it's done is created a, a file much similar to the one I've manually created here. Now the curious thing is, let's go to text edit and see if the file it's created differs wildly from the one that I created. So we'll drop it in here. So as you can see, it's doing what I did, but a little differently for sure. Oh, look at all this stuff. So it's putting the password and username at the end. Okay, so it is it is doing it a little differently than I did it manually, but let's go ahead and, yeah, let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. So now I've executed it, and when you double click it, it just brings up this file. Uh, that could be a tool type issue. Let's go up to information, icon, it is set to workbench. Oh, that's because it says sys tools text edit. So if you go down to my share that I created and you go down to information and you go to icon, it's using the C mount command workbench. So what I'm going to do is over here on this tool type, I'm going to change it from text edit. We're going to change this to C mount. So we'll go to C. There you go. Mount. Okay. Save. So now when I run this, it should bring up the share. It says it's mounted, but I don't, again, I don't see. Isn't this fun? Isn't this exciting? Okay, so let's go back to text edit, which I keep quitting for some reason. So yeah, it's it's created all of this, but it's done it differently from how mine. So here's mine. Mine does it this way. It does the, the SMB name, and then you have to put the username and password in, and then the share. It's a really simple thing. I mean, it's just letting you know at Quinn. Now the reason I can do at Quinn is because that host file has the IP address already in there. This is doing something very similar. Let's go full screen on this. You can see here. Now, I apologize to anybody who knows how to do this and they're screaming at the screen right now, but hey, if you're watching this channel, I mean, you're probably drunk or just bored or I have no idea, I'm sorry, but I appreciate those that watch this channel for whatever reason you watch for. But yeah, if you're yelling at the screen right now, this guy does not know what he's doing. You are correct. Now, yeah, so it does, it's doing the big long, I, yeah, it's just, it's wording this totally differently from how you're supposed to do it to make it work. It's doing it, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not sure why this SMB tool is doing it this way. I don't know why this is how they're choosing to do it. And obviously it's not working. I mean, it makes sense the, the way it's pathing this out. This, this, this is how it should be pathed. The user and password though is a little bizarre how it's doing it. And then of course, if we go here, we'll go to the tool type. We'll probably have to change the tool type again. Information. Uh, yeah, see, so it keeps defaulting to text edit. I want a clean workbench to see what the heck's going on here. So that's been saved. So I'm gonna double click it. Now it's already mounted. I know it says it's already mounted. So we're gonna go ahead and reboot. All right, we're back. And 
We've got our SMB2. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click. And if it was, if it's working, if it's, if it was writing its stuff the right way, uh, we should see a share pop up on the screen. And in fact, if I try to run it again, it will say, hey, this is already mounted. So I'm like, okay, let's go to Amiga share. And yeah, it's not there. It's not there. Does not, does not work. Does not exist. You can do SMB2. Nope, nothing, nothing works. Yep, dead, dead ski. Does not work. Fast forward to the end of this video. Does not work. The way they're scripting this does not work. So if I double click my version of the share, hey, look at that. Grin files, yay. And as you saw, my um, file is, is formatted differently. However this is laid out works. Uh, so unfortunately, whatever they're doing here, this just doesn't work. So I don't know whoever writes this program. I mean, I appreciate the GUI. It's kind of fun to be able to just type and do a, a program and just start right ripping off shares. You could just start making a bunch of shares that way. And then obviously, when you've created them, it's putting them in, into storage, but you could add these to your devs um, DOS drivers folder and they would launch at startup and you'd have all your shares pop, 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 populate for you, which would be kind of cool actually. Um, but that doesn't, doesn't seem to be doing that. And because uh, you notice um, it just, it keeps, nothing happens. I double click and nothing shows up. Sorry about that, but hey, this is a, uh, these are, these are the kind of videos I make, by the way. I mean, I make lightweight videos and I just make, here's Q using his Amiga, you know, in real time, sort of, with edits, so it's not 40 minutes long. I guess that's it. The You need the wrap -a GUI, you need the uh, set thing stuff installed, like I said earlier in the video, but that SMB2 GUI, maybe keep an eye on it. You know, maybe thumbnail it or bookmark it, whatever. Just keep an eye on it, see if they, maybe it's a fairly new tool, so maybe they're gonna keep updating it. Maybe they understand that people's systems are different and the way they wrote that doesn't quite work for everybody. And just keep an eye on it. SMB2 dash GUI, maybe it'll evolve. Maybe once I end this video and actually read the README file, I'll go, Q, you moron, this is what you needed to do. And then they'll give me an excuse to make another video where I update you about that. All right, thanks for watching. If you're still here, I'm done with this video.